So can you believe it? 250? It, it, I, had, I was surprised when I was counting them up to see if it was really that many. What is it about Centaur? So the, the fact, I mean, obviously, number one is the fact that it uses hydrogen oxygen, the high energy upper stage, the combination of those propellants. And again, going back to the work that they did to tame the propellants, as everybody said, the common bulkhead and just everything that goes into the structure to make that the light vehicle. And, yeah. and again, this is more self-serving, but you have to give kudos to the RL10 engine to have an engine that can do that. Um, to be as, as efficient as that thing is. The whole top to bottom of that vehicle is just so efficient. Well, that, that's an engine guy talk, and I'm a structures guy, so I <laughs> like the, uh, the steel balloon concept of the tank design. It's super thin walls. The, the walls, today's center are 20 thousandths of an inch thick. Back then, the original center was 14 thousandths of an inch thick. That's like nothing. It's, it's like the soda can analogy. It's, it's very strong when it's pressurized. And as long as the center tank re retains that pressure, it is extremely strong and extremely lightweight. And it's incredible to think that that concept came up, you know, 40, 50 years ago, and we've still got that same technology. It was so good, still, it has lasted this long. And it it's a, it's a the key test of time. design criteria, you know, the mass fraction of the rocket. How much propellant can you carry for how little dry mass? And we've structure. challenged that, that design several times throughout the course of the vehicle's evolution. It says, hey, is there a better way, a more cost-effective, a more higher-performing method? And we keep coming back to, no, that was the right answer then, and it's the right answer now. Right. And, and so. proof, proof of that is, you know, it's flown on Atlas. It's flown on two different variations of Titan. It's yeah. flown... Uh, well, we've taken it all the way that. Five, five it, different generations. It, it, of it was revisited for Vulcan. Is is that the right solution for Vulcan? And we did an extensive trade and came back to yeah, it's yep. still the best it option wins. out there. So it's just amazing that no other vehicle, no other upper stage can mat, match its performance. You know, pound it, for pound. I'll take this down another thread here a little bit. Uh, how has Centaur evolved over time? You know, the uh, there's a lot. You know, it, it's old. Yeah. And it was graph paper or notes, but today it's it's like we it's reborn, refreshed year over year. What what are some of those? See everything we do changes? is add-ons. I mean you go back to the basic structure and I don't mean to give you credit for this, but I, I mean I'll take and it. that has hasn't really changed. I mean the whole concept of the common bulkhead was the big deal. You had the engines mounted directly to the vehicle. Those are the real basic things. We've changed the engine, we've made the engine better. I mean, it's an RL ten it was never 10,000 pounds of thrust. I don't know where they got RL-10, but it's RL-10. We're up to 25,000 pounds of thrust now, pretty much right in that area and, and growing. We it changed. Was, it was 15,000, I yeah, think, 15 with, we started. with boost pumps. And then mm -hmm. we yeah. evolved that with no boost pumps. Right. And the avionics has obviously gotten a lot oh. better over the years. Um, that, that's a major undertaking to, to keep re-sweeting it with the latest in, in avionics, the, the redundancy that's in it now that, that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the things that has helped it get its an incredible reliability record. I, th I thought the structures guy was going to toot his horn on additive manufacturing. You know, Centaur is an additive manufactured product. Right. Not 3D printed. It, it's not 3D printed, but it, you don't carve away a lot. You don't start with a big chunk of aluminum and carve everything away. That, that stainless steel you start with comes in big, big sheets and rolls and everything that comes off the roll ends up on the rocket. So it's also a manufacturing efficient um, vehicle. The, uh, the technology has stayed current. Mm -hmm. You know, it started with an attitude control system, hydrogen peroxide went to hydrazine and now we're working on a new generation. Right, to make uh, it more efficient. Even. Right, even even more. Insulation so. systems, you know. We, yeah, we used to have those the, insulation the panels, panels. The panels the that had to be jettisoned and, yeah. you know, and all the, all the me mechanisms and mechanics that go with that and the, the failure modes that could potentially happen with that. Mm -hmm. fix, yeah. fix foam and then Sophie. Remember we used to have to pump out the bulkhead? Actively, yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of things like that. R the RL10 itself, we're is, you know, we talk about pace too. additive. We're starting to put real, I should <laughs> additive manufactured hardware on the RL10 on the upcoming versions. We've gone through several variants, you know, RL10 A3, RL10 A4, RL10 C now is what we're working to, and different versions in the future. Well, in the ancillary systems, and not, not just engine related, but there's a lot of other additive manufacturing parts that we're bringing in for the Vulcan. Um, the uh, LOX vent system, the, the veined elbow in the RL-10 is a very hard to make part today. Mm. Very expensive and hard to make part. And we can make it much faster and much cheaper and lighter. 
Um, so we're, we've got uh, quite a few added manufactured parts that are getting baseline for Vulcan. So that's going to be very exciting. You know, well, the other part that we're not touching on yet is the fact, how are we successful? The fact that it can do so much. Yeah, it's efficient. It's got good engines on it. You know, the structure is great. But what high it's energy capability. upper stage, the capability that it can do, the fact that we can do the long coast, long durations, um, right. coasts, we can, you know, burn at apogee, circularize orbits, take things directly to a geostationary orbit if we need to. Um, those are our major capabilities that, that a lot of a lot of upper stages don't provide. And you end up doing demonstrated and provide. Yeah, yeah. provide and you, so you end up doing the work that for other people, the spacecraft would have to do. We can take care of it, put them in orbit a lot quicker. It's just still amazing that we have gotten to 250. I mean, we talked earlier about, I'm at 176 and you guys are beyond that. And just to think that that's how many we've launched. Um, it's, it is just a great testament to what the vehicle can do and, and, and how we can you know, continue to improve it, to make it capable.